Today I'm super excited to show you the how I can breath a new life into an old Chromebook by installing a different operating system. As much as I love my Chromebook, it's starting to feel a bit sluggish, so I'm going to install a new OS to improve its performance and extend its usability. Okay, to do this, it includes disassembling the Chromebook, identifying the right protection screw, choosing the new OS, researching and preparation, enabling the developer mode, creating a bootable USB drive with the new OS, and exploring the new OS after you're done. The first step is to remove the right protection screw because the right protection screw is the one that prevents unauthorized modifications to the Chromebook's firmware. This is typically located on the motherboard of the Chromebook and removing the screw is the key to enabling the installation of other operating systems or performing root related tasks. The ironic part of this is this small little screw is what that unauthorizes us to download any other OS while still gatekeeping us from further updates from Google. So then comes the scary part. It is pretty scary to remove the screw because sometimes for some cases it won't even budge. It's really hard to remove the screw so you must be patient and slowly put pressure on it and you know try to uninstall it. After the first 10 minutes of suffering I decided to go for a smaller screw and try it again and I suffered for the next 10 minutes yet again. After half an hour of trying I finally got the screw out. It was so tense. I was scared that I would like break the motherboard or anything but I didn't so it's all good. Here's a little cheeky bastard that I just took off and it's quite annoying to take it out. It's actually one of the most annoying parts of it, but the most annoying part is yet to come. Obviously, get the cover back in its place and assemble all those screws back together and just make sure you don't break the back part because it's quite fragile. And after all that hardcore WP screw thingy, just make sure your Chromebook gets a really good nice wipe down with a wet tissue or ethanol. Look how clean it looks, it looks just like new. So the next time you turn your Chromebook on, this page might come up. It says OS verification is off. On this page, make sure you do not click anything on your keyboard or touchpad. After a few seconds, it should start transitioning into developer mode. And for the next few steps, do not panic, just let the Chromebook do its work until the next OS verification page comes up. So it may take a while, just sit back and relax, but keep your eye on the Chromebook. So here comes my part of the story. At first I was hoping I'm going to install Gallium OS. So this OS is also a lightweight OS for Chromebooks, but I was on the way, I was midway doing it, but at the end of the process I realized my Chromebook doesn't meet the requirements, the basic minimum requirements for this. I realized my Dell is a very old Dell Chromebook that runs on a Braswell Intel Pentium, uh, so I gotta make sure I have a lightweight OS while also matching the requirements. And the problem is there aren't much OS that supports lightweight Chromebooks that is literally from 2014, so I had to look and research everywhere. Good thing I realized before I went to the last stage, for Gallium OS, uh, it's discontinued in 2022. And I realized there's another OS called Chrome OS Flex. Yeah, just the word flex in the end. Might be a good OS for my Chromebook. So I got right on to it. For Chrome OS Flex, this is one of the first steps. Okay, don't follow what I'm doing in the video, just hear what I'm saying, okay? This is just a reference to what I was doing at that moment for the Chrome OS Flex, but I will make it simpler for you. So at first, when you're done transitioning into developer mode for your Chromebook, what you have to first go inside as guest mode or whatever. It's better if you log in with the Gmail. And after you're able to get inside your Chromebook, you must open any browser, Google, Chrome, Firefox, whatever, most preferably your default browser at that moment that you have installed. Just go inside and then the first thing you're going to do is click Ctrl, Alt and T. Doing this will allow you to get into a terminal called Chronos. From here, you'll be able to download a boot system package that you will need to install or, you know, boot into any Chrome OS Flex. For the next part, I'm not trying to show you myself because for me and my Chromebook specifically, the audio driver doesn't work. But it might work for you, so it's worth giving it a try. Now we need to create a bootable USB drive with a new operating system. You will need a blank USB drive with more than 8 gigs, and then you can use a tool like Chromebook Recovery Utility to create the new bootable drive. This step is crucial for installing the new OS onto your Chromebook. 
And then from here they'll ask for your operating system. Make sure you select Chrome OS Flex both times. After that, you'll have to select your USB drive to make sure you're installing the right drive. After that, just click next and you have to wait for a while. Well, for me, I told you my audio drivers doesn't work with Chrome OS Flex. And then I proceeded to try one more OS called Ubuntu. It's also a different OS, but the problem is my Chromebook doesn't meet the requirements, the minimum requirements to use Ubuntu OS. So after that, finally, God gave me a favor and I could use one OS, which seemed pretty cool. And obviously the UI comes in a big game and I love me some good Good, nice UIs so Fedora workstation was a goal for me and for that you have to install the UEFI firmware which is crucial to install any kind of OS the easiest way I left the link down in the description below for you to watch it so after what I did was I downloaded the Fedora 39 uh, you know the ISO file I just used Rufus software to put that into my USB as a bootable drive so I used the software to put the ISO into my USB to make it a bootable USB driver. So as you can see here, it's processing, it's formatting the whole USB, making it clear in order to, you know, put the whole ISO in into a uh, dispatched uh, partition file. So I faced many problems along the way. I had to like, you know, format the USB many, many times uh, and then they got like, you know, um, uh, partitioned into small iffy system files. I had to go back again, use like uh, the command prompts and bring it back to life. It was crazy. But after I got the OS into my bootable USB drive, I connected to my Chromebook and I just started booting it in with the control D, connecting it to the Chromebook uh, after, just after the verification thingy. And then I select my USB USB, I go inside and just use the USB as the booted system and it'll ask um, you know what your OS you want to open and I selected Fedora uh, so yeah for that it will just install by itself and that's that and after nine hours of constant trying I finally got Fedora to work on my Chromebook so I was like a very very happy moment for me uh, and it was installing the packages and all that stuff uh, but obviously it came with its own problems the problem is for Chromebook, the top row, which is the F1 to F12, uh, those are assigned for different graphical materials, like graphic graphical, as in like the icons that are shown. Some for uh, audio, some for uh, brightness, some for maximizing windows and stuff. So for Fedora, those are identified as F keys. So I had to go and use a different editor file. Uh, so I had to go on and use a software called dconf editor. So for that I had to use codes like, you know, third bracket. So I had to do some scripting and after that it finally worked. So I got the, you know, the uh, F keys to work as it's mentioned in the Chromebook, not as uh, programmed in the Fedora. So it was all good after that. So now I have a Linux laptop uh, which has an overclocked processor and yeah, I, I think I increased this price by a lot, like five times more at least. So that's it for this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. I would really appreciate if you subscribe because I work really hard for these videos. That's it guys. Have a good day.